Hi, I'm Yenna, and I read 14 books this month. I think at this point, this number is... It is what it is. I guess I read a lot. First, I read One Tin Bakes by Ed Kimber, which came out last September. I found out about it from the Instagram account Chubby Kitchen, and what can I say? I was influenced. The concept of a sheet cake somehow just really resonated with me in its simplicity and ease, although I did have to buy the sheet pan that's supposedly so standard, going against the whole everybody already has this cooking equipment at home premise. Because I traveled a lot this month, I baked exactly one thing with the pan so far, using a recipe not even from this book, but I did truly enjoy making sheet cakes again and am eager to bake from this book in the very near future. It's currently cherry season and the olive oil cherry snacking cake is calling my name. Next, I read One Punch Man, Volume 22, immediately upon purchase. Summer to me isn't complete without manga and Asian snacks. This one is as fun as can be expected. Then I read this Namio Harukawa book, which still remains a bit of a mystery to me. The publisher Baron is small. I had to enter the Goodreads data info for it, and it only has one poorly written essay preceding the artwork images, which have no materials or date info. But I got this to use as a reference book, which can still serve in that purpose. I just wish I actually learned something from this very gorgeous but very underwhelming book. I've been following the pastry chef Camilla Wynn's Instagram recently for her stunning and whimsical cakes decorated with candied fruits, so of course I pre-ordered Jam Bake. I expected to find tons of candied fruitcake recipes, so I was disappointed to find zero, and instead mostly jam recipes and ideas to incorporate them with desserts. I do love jam, but the book reminded me of the existence of botulism, which is terrifying, so I'm probably going to set this aside for a while until I feel ready to make my own jams and be that person with a fridge and pantry full of homemade sauces and tinctures. I believe in myself. I'll get there. Beautiful book, though. Then I drove to San Jose area for a wedding and one night at the hotel read The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Adisha Filia in a single sitting. Ben from Doom Antidote recommended it in one of his videos here on BookTube, and I just took it along with me mostly for its slim, travel-friendly size. But it was a delightful, delectable surprise. Each short story very impressive, leaving me feeling so much for every single character. The standout is Peach Cobbler, which I still think about. I felt huge by comparison, like I could crush her bones with one hard squeeze, with one hard truth. Next, I finished the last two Neapolitan novels, Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay, and The Story of the Lost Child by Elena Ferrante, which I'll discuss further in their own video, but spoiler alert, they're incredible. I'm so happy to carry the story in my life forever now. I also read Incidental Inventions immediately after because I just can't get enough of Ferrante, and it was a quick read, a nice insight into her mentality and IRL persona. Throughout the month, I read The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, which I admit is a peer pressure read because I've never read or really heard of John Green. But everyone kept talking about this book, and I saw it at Costco, so sold. And it's nice, like an old white learned scientific history-oriented grandpa telling me his life's tales. But in book format, which is great because plenty more opportunities to throw in quotes, and there are a lot. As you can see, they're all highlighted. And they're all great. I love the idea of John Green has outlived John Keats' 26th birthday party, where every guest brings prepared poetry recitations. One night, I just picked up The Custard Heart by Dorothy Parker from 1944 and was floored. The first short story is dripping with disdainful satire and had me cackling with laughter slender arched feet like elegant bananas and the second story pretty much ended me it's devastating this little book is utter perfection then for the last week of june i was in hawaii and read luster by raven leilani which is probably the most hyped book of last year as far as i can tell i read it on the plane and between the content and the travel anxiety it was not an enjoyable experience to say the least the story is suffocatingly unhappy, with no breathing room. The millennial culture drops were also overwhelming. 
I think I like Raven Leilani, but I don't think I like Luster. None of the characters are sympathetic. I don't think they're supposed to be. And the whole relationship between Edie and Rebecca, I'm pretty sure went over my head. I didn't get whatever that was supposed to be at all. Please enlighten me. Then I read So Sad Today by Melissa Broder, which is an interesting choice to read during a fun, happy Hawaiian vacation, but I enjoyed it immensely. I love Melissa Broder. It's sad to think the stuff described in the Pisces and Milk Fed are all based on her reality. She's had a lot of bad sex. Sad and laugh out loud funny. Continuing my weird beach read choices, I read The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford in anticipation of the Amazon series coming out next month, which I'm so excited about. I read Mary S. Lovell's The Sisters, the saga of the Mitford sisters, several times, and I'm fascinated by that family. If you've never heard of them, I highly recommend the biography, and I'll link their wiki page below in the description box. But suffice to say, I'm very familiar with the story and have been meaning to read Nancy's books for years now, and finally got around to it. And dare I say, I liked it better than Little Women? And I love Little Women. It would be my annual Christmas time reread because of its wholesomeness. But that's precisely why I enjoyed The Pursuit of Love so much more. It's like the British aristocratic version of Little Women, but with none of the virtuous pretenses. The main character, Linda, dislikes children, including her own, and chases her desires, however ill-suited. And considering it's the 1940s, that's pretty powerful. He evidently had not envisaged so soon, having seven, and indeed both he and Aunt Sadie lived in a perpetual state of surprise at having filled so many cradles, about the future of whose occupants they seemed to have no particular policy. Very droll. And finally, I read Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshveg because my paperback pre-order copy finally arrived. This is definitely not a natural beach book choice, but when you get a new, new to me at least, Moshveg, what are you going to do? You're going to read a tense, creepy murder mystery at the beach house is what you're going to do. And despite being in a house full of family in Hawaiian paradise, the loneliness of Vesta Gull in her foresty cabin was achingly palpable. All the other moshfegs are stories about the dregs of society, but this is the first to really emphasize the supreme vulnerability of those people. This is a deep dive character study where it doesn't matter what's true and what's fiction. What matters is where the story takes you emotionally in your mind space. I love this. June was definitely an exciting, eventful reading month. A lot of pink books. Hmm. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I hope you all had a great reading month. Bye!